Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about Citadel's new colors in the contrast range. So let's get into it. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get to the technique and learn it Vinci V style. If you watched last week's video you know that we talked all about the new contrast shades. This week we're going to continue this exploration and we're going to talk about all about the new contrast colors. Now, this new range of colors is very much just an extension of the existing contrast paints. So if you're familiar with them, well, then you pretty much know what you're in for as far as performance of these paints go. Now, recently GW brought me over and introduced all these new paints to myself, as well as many other hobbyists, and let us play around with them for a little while. Uh, basically, we got a full day to just put them through their paces and see what we could do. I have to say, I had a great amount of fun. So while I was there, I painted a couple miniatures. So I painted this Plague Bearer. Uh, he was the first thing I experimented with. I really wanted to try those new punchy greens. Uh, then we decided to go a little try hard with the new black and some of the other colors and paint up this Legion of the Damned Marine. And finally, at the end of the day, I made off with this. This is Andy Wardle's Space Marine that he painted. I've got him, Andy. He's mine now. If you want him back, you can just send me any of your golden demons and I will happily put him in the mail back to you. <laughs> but honestly, what I am excited for with these new paints is they're so much more saturated. They're bright. They're intense. Seven of these paints are single pigment colors and boy, you can feel it. So let's get over to the desk. We're going to use these things on a miniature today, see what we can do, put them through the, their various paces, and really explore how all the different ways we can put these contrast paints to their best use. So, let's do it. All right, so obviously all of the contrast paints used here are just the new colors. So we're going to focus in on what they can do. They'll scroll up at the top. Uh, I thought a Blight King would really be the perfect model to do this with because he has so many different textures and reasons to use a ton of different colors. So let's just have a good time with our gross, icky boy here. And as usual, this guy is Zenithold, and that's the first thing I want to say. I continue to believe that the best way to use contrast paints is not over, you know, pure white or any of their straight rattle cans, but over a uh, Zenithold Prime, i.e. you paint the whole thing black, and then you paint it white from above. This could be through airbrush. This could be through two rattle cans. It could be you dry brush on the, the white color. It doesn't really matter. Just having some tonal variation already existing in the undershade, effectively what would traditionally be called a grise, will do a lot of work to really make these things more punchy and help them express the natural variation that they're already good at doing. Um, so to set down, obviously, we're just getting in some various base tones, really exploring the new colors and seeing how they feel. I have to say right off the rip, um, I really, really like the three tones that we've seen here thus far. Um, this brown is really nice, and I'm a fan generally of the browns. Now, some of these paints are single pigment. So for example, this one, this purple is and that means it is super intense. One thing I think people aren't going to be ready for are with things like the ball red and the purple and the, the orange and such, just how kick you in the teeth they are. Uh, so here is my recommendation. Here you saw me thin this with uh, obviously a little bit of water in the brush, but also two drops of contrast medium to every one drop of paint. And so between basically a brush full of water and two drops of contrast medium. This is still one drop of this purple. Look how intense this still is, right? This stuff is super saturated. It is saturation intensities. So uh, my high recommendation to you is if you're going to use any of the single pigment colors, which is the magenta, the crimson, the red, the orange, um, the main yellow, the purple, um, you know, de uh, mix them with contrast medium. Now I thinned it way, way down. So adding in three more brushfuls of water and you can see it's still working like an awesome glaze to add color in here. Look at how that pigment is, col is still collecting down in the recesses and adding this wonderful filter to the gross skin, adding more purple tones into the shadows, to the wounds, edging them, stuff like that. So even when you break these things way down, once again here, this is the, uh, obviously the magenta in play here and boy oh boy uh is it still again really intense 
Um, I suspect it's probably using PR122 as its pigment. I don't know that for sure because they don't release their recipes, but that's what this feels like to me given its intensity and transparency. And yet again, I can thin it way down. This is uh, basically four drops of contrast medium and uh, three brushfuls of water, and I'm still getting you know this pink tone uh, like this on the on the thing to one drop of paint, by the way. Uh, and so just using it here, we can splash it around and really get a lot of interesting different effects. I think one of the myths that happens with these contrast paints is people think, oh, these are just for simple beginner painters or they're for noobs or something like that. You can't do nice work with them. I think that's ridiculous. I mentioned that Plague Bearer at the beginning, so I want to show you two different miniatures right now. This Plague Bearer that's on the screen right now, he was done in four minutes. Okay, So roughly, I basically put a layer of paint on, touch, touch something else, touch something else, applied the hairdryer. About four minutes. Now this Plague Bearer, the one I showed you earlier, this one took about an hour and a half. Right? Same model, wildly different effects. There's absolutely no reason that you can't use these paints, especially in conjunction with techniques like loaded brush, to really achieve some amazing high-end effects. So if these paints fit with your workflow, your style, then use them, because honestly, they can be a great part of so many different techniques. One of the strengths of contrast paints is that once they set, they set, they don't reactivate, and we're going to put that to the ultimate test now. So here we're going to add some more depth, we're going to get out Agrax Earthshade, and we're just going to more or less bathe the miniature. Um, now this is the new Agrax using the contrast method. I've showed this in the last video, link up above. But then I'm going to take a bunch of contrast medium, just raw contrast medium, and smooth it all over all the basically high parts of the miniature to remove all that contrast shade I just put on from the high part and make it really only collect and flow down into the low parts. When I, my brush goes off camera, I'm just wiping it there. So what I'm doing is I just sop the whole thing in contrast medium, and then I pull it off so that the top remains, you know, colored and, and green and the, the original tone it should, but it collects in all the lower parts. And sure enough, dried just fine. No issue at all. Now, five of the paints in the range, and this is one of them, this is Rattling Grime, uh, are really weak. Like, that is to say, they have much less effect. And I do wish this is something they would call out a little more on the actual paints. But I love these weaker contrasts. They end up being quite useful when you're doing things like soft shadows and glazing. So if you have troubles with those kinds of techniques, things like rattling grime or whatever can be incredibly helpful. Now, I've seen other content creators and other people say, oh, but if you make a mistake, you can't back it out. That's not true. A little bit of bright ivory, you can easily back out anything you do wrong. You just touch over the area. And in fact, we're going to go farther than that. I'm going to show you just how easy it is to create new highlights. So here, I'm going to sketch out everything I want highlighted on that green, everything I want to push up the contrast on, across his armor in just pure bright ivory from Pro Acryl. Then, using a thin glaze of the original color, so this is just mixed two to one with contrast medium, I'm just going to glaze away from the highlights, but still covering the whole surface. So I, I still cover everything that uh, that I turned white, but I'm always pulling the paint away. And I'm just going to go over this entire thing with about two to three glazes, focusing especially on the edges. And then I'll go back in with the full strength contrast paint on the very edge of the paint to really blend it back in. And what you get is this nice, beautiful, soft highlight that really just pops up the miniature. It's so easy. Loaded brush blending. This is the longest section of the video. I think a lot of people really have a challenge with this technique, but it's such a powerful tool. And I decided to go ahead and give him a whole new skin tone here just to show you what this can do. The trick with loaded brush is you need a relatively thick white paint on the tip of your brush or bright paint. In this case, again, it's still bright ivory. And you need an extremely high flow liquid paint down in the belly. That just means the rest of the brush. Guess what contrast paints are? They're exactly that. And so here you can just touch the tip of your brush. You need a nice sharp tip into that contrast paint. And as you touch the miniature, that contrast paint being so high flow floods up into that paint and slowly mixes. 
creating this instantaneously smooth, easy blend. And you can see how I just repeatedly keep stretching the, or you know, putting a new white line on. And then as I go, it slowly fades into the other color. And in fact, every time so often you'll see me touch my thumb. That's just to push a bunch of the contrast up to the top and let me smooth the edge out. It makes it so easy to do these big complicated blends across something like skin tone in a lot of different ways. Now here I'm only going from bright to dark. You can of course go the other direction as well. You could have like a contrast paint and put a touch of uh, black paint in yours to create shadows or something like that and then smooth it into the midtone. But the key is the contrast paint as the midtone ends up being perfect for this particular task and really makes your life so easy to achieve these ultra smooth blends across a whole miniature. You can see this only took a few minutes and boy oh boy do we have a cool looking skin tone on our Blight King. We can also choose to mix these directly in. So here I'm just taking a standard acrylic paint, again Pro Acryl Bright Ivory, and mixing it into the contrast paint. Now the best part is we inherit some of the transparency and flow of the contrast paint. It just flows right off the brush. But by adding in this brighter color, we can of course create these nice, nice smooth layers very quickly and easily. So you saw how I just, every time I had one brush load of white and then just mix in increasing amounts of that magenta and boom, there we go. I get a nice smooth blend traveling through the layers because the contrast pull together. Lastly, these new colors are really great for weathering. We finally have great weathering contrast paints. So this intense brown is wonderful to turn something into a rusted mess. Uh, so I really like that for getting those dark, deep, old rust browns on things. And then this, the new orange is absolutely wonderful for doing this rust sort of, uh, you know, pitting and streaking and, and fresh rust. The really nice part about it is because it shrinks into the holes on stuff like Nurgle, it just absolutely kicks. Uh, so lots of options when it comes to weathering for these new paints. My final thoughts on these are they're pretty great. They continue the line of contrast paints. So if you liked contrast paints before and what they did, you'll like them now. It's not that much different. However, I do think what's notable here is these colors really are a lot more bright and intense. And I think that's pretty great. Oftentimes one of the challenges with previous versions of contrast and using it on miniatures was that the miniatures ended up coming out sometimes a little dull desaturated and just kind of boring. Here with these, I'm excited about not only using them as part of my workflow in painting miniatures, but also really as, you know, through the airbrush or as glazes to restore saturation and increase the punch on the miniature. And I think that's something that's pretty darn awesome. In addition to all the normal ways you can use these paints to get things, you know, your army on the table fast. So I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, give it a like, subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. Don't forget we have new videos here every Saturday. If you've got any questions on the new range I didn't answer, drop those down in the comments below. I always answer every comment and question. If you would like to continue this journey of learning, hey, I've got a Patreon link down below focused on review and feedback. So feel free to hit that up if you want to take your next step on your hobby journey and join an awesome Discord community full of enthusiastic hobbyists. As always, though, I thank you so much for watching this one, and we'll see you next time.